T4, T5, T6 area, I'm noticing that there are some, even if I feel this, there's some stiffness over here. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side bilaterally, so I'm just gonna rotate you this way. Sorry, there. Yeah, so they seem to be moving towards me when I expect them to move away. Uh, so we have a bilateral lesion on the erector spinae on the T3, T4, T5 segments over here. So that is a type 4, or a type 2, but I'm going to uh, test it by a lateral flexion as well. So I'm going to place my hand over here, and I'm going to essentially try to flex you sideways, if you just allow me. There we go. So what we're expecting here is that the spinous process moves away from me on flexion. Okay. In this case, they do move away. So it's, a, it's not a type 4 issue, oh, oh, except on this T4, T5 segment. So they do, are, they are coming towards me. All right. So how that works, okay. So a lot of the issues are found on the T3, T4, T5 segment. This point is still a little tender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna soften it up with some oil. area here. Try to lengthen this area. This is where the fixation was located over here. So, is it okay for me to to do this? Sure, yeah. Okay, so what I need you to do is to um, relax. Mm -hmm. uh, see if you can focus your attention to your toes. Yeah, so we have it here. All right, so just wiggle your toes. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Hi there. Are you Mr. Alex? I am, yes. My name is Soraya. I'm here to do a, an assessment of your lower back, is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. So before we begin, I'm just going to sanitize my hand, make sure that um, I don't pass anything on to you. <laughs> Thank um, you. Can you describe to me what happened? Uh, I'm experiencing a low back strain while I was digging in my garden. I oh. uh, felt a sudden kind of ache, and so now I just have pain in the low back, but up into the sides. Okay, so you were digging into your garden. When did, when exactly were uh, you doing that? I was doing it yesterday. Oh, just yesterday. So it hasn't been a long time. Okay, well, thanks for coming in so quickly. Most people wait till the last minute, so it's the sooner we treat it, the better. So you're pointing to both sides of your back. Is it located on both sides? Yes, yeah, e equally on both sides. Okay, equal on both sides. And could you describe to me what kind of pain you're experiencing? Right now it feels like a dull ache. Okay. It has gotten w a little worse uh, after I slept on it. Oh. Uh, but it's just in my low back, uh, maybe to my mid-back, equally on both sides. All right, so when you slept on it, and can you tell me what position you slept on? Uh, usually uh, in my, on my side, on my right side, I sleep. Okay, and the right side is still the same as the other one? Correct. Okay, and can you, uh, if you have to describe the pain from like 0 to 10, 0 being absolutely no pain, and 10 being the most excruciating pain that you've ever felt, where would it lay? Right now, I'd say it's a 6. Okay. But when I move maybe a seven, a little bit worse. I don't okay. want it to get any worse. So I'd like to 
treat it now. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, when it gets higher, it can interfere with your ability to do things like work or... Is that correct? Yes, that is. All right, so we'll have a look and make sure that it's treated uh, promptly. Um, does it ever run down your leg? Uh, no, I not this particular injury. I've had, had that in the past, but not right now. Okay, so it doesn't travel anywhere else. No. Okay, and um, I'm not sure if there's any kind of sensation, like warmth or anything like that that you feel. No, I, I did try to apply heat, uh, but without any relief. Okay, so, um, okay, so heat doesn't make it better. Have you tried cold? Uh, no, not at this. I don't have anything uh, like that. Okay, no problem. Okay, it's just uh, good to know what helps it and what doesn't help it. So right now it sounds like what makes it worse is that if you lay on it, um, does it get better with movement or does it get better with just staying still? I, I've been babying it and not moving much because when I move, the pain is a little worse. Okay, okay, so it gets worse with movement. All right, okay, so I'll have a look and see what, what we can find and hopefully we can do something about it. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to write that down. So dull, achy pain. Both sides of the lower back. That started after gardening. Oh, do you remember what you were doing in the garden? Exactly. I was using a shovel and digging. Okay, okay. All right. And uh, do you have a dominant side? Uh, are you right or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Okay, okay. And right-handed. All right, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to explain to you what this exam entails and then what we can, what are the options um, in terms of treatment. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing that with me, Alex. Um, that must be uncomfortable for you to have that pain. So we'll have a look at it and see what we can do in terms of treatment options. Um, so I'm just gonna explain to you how the procedure is done. Uh, this procedure is gonna involve you having your shirt off. It's gonna involve me having a look. It's, it's called inspection of your back and also uh, palpation, which is gentle um, pressing on your spine and your back. And uh, I may mark certain areas of your back with a marker just for me to be able to distinguish landmarks or acupuncture points. And, um, and also uh, if it requires, uh, the treatment can involve um, manipulation, which is rapid, uh, high velocity, low amplitude thrust, which can generate a popping sound um, of the of the joints and the use of uh, glass cups that are heated in order to create a suction um, that is meant to uh, loosen uh, tight muscles or it may involve um, soft or deep tissue massage like treatment to again loosen any muscles okay so is that something that you're okay with yes okay good perfect all right, so before further ado, then, yeah, I just need you to have, uh, remove your shirt, and then if you could face uh, to the opposite, to the wall over there, and then we'll have a look at your back. Okay. All right, perfect, thanks. Uh, I'll just turn it off. Oh, it's on, okay. Uh, yeah, so now, it may actually be good if, okay, yeah, so you would be faced that way. It may be good if, I realize it may be good if you have a gown on so that we can clip this thing on. Oh, yeah. Thanks again, Alex, for uh, having us take a look at your back, having me take a look at your back. Um, and thanks for um, turning around so I could see what's happening here. Um, in the beginning, I'm just going to do some inspection and palpation, as I mentioned and I may mark certain landmarks. So I'm actually gonna get a marker right here. Okay. All right, so first we're gonna identify all the um, spinal segments. So 
the first cervical spine can be palpated over here. Oh, okay, that's actually a little stiff. Okay, I'm just gonna go to the occipital protuberance, work my way down to C2. I'm just gonna place my hand here. Okay, are you, I'm just gonna turn your head to the side here. Okay, and to the other side. Okay, good, so this is C7. I'm just gonna draw a circle here and call it C7, all right? And this is T1. I'm gonna mark that a different color. This is thoracic, we're gonna mark green. This is T1. Okay, I'm just gonna place two fingers here. I'm gonna ask you to look up, okay, and then down. All right, perfect, so this is C6. It tends to disappear on flexion and extension, so that's C6. So C7 is mobile, T1 is stationary on rotation. Good, so we've identified T1, and I'm just gonna look for the other ones here. So this is T2, I'm just gonna mark a line there. T3 should be in line with the scapula, scapular spine, which in this case is, are you able to protract your back uh, if you take your hand? Yep, yeah, there we go. So here's the scapula from here to here. I'm just gonna expose that a little bit. Here's the apex, and then here's the base. All right. And here's the spine. And then there's a landmark there, T4. Okay. And the apex should be T7 right here. You can also verify that by counting from T1, T2, T3. able to just relax your shoulders there we go and maybe slouch a little bit okay there we are t8 and t9 around here t9 t10 11 All right, so on this superior iliac crest, we'll normally find L2. So I'll change the colors to purple here. This is L2. Above that is L1, so there's not a lot of space here. L2, L1. So this is T12 then. That should be T12 according to this. This is L3. And this is L4. Okay. And this would be L5. And then the sacrum would then begin over there. So I'm just going to verify again from the top. So from over here, we'll just... Many of it's not palpable anymore, but from C6, C7, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, 10, 11, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so I think those are the landmarks that just helps me identify where the location is. I know you mentioned the lower back, but we're going to go from the top to the bottom anyhow. Um, how are you doing so far? I feel fine. Okay, good. Was there any discomfort upon palpation of the spine? No. Okay, perfect. And upon my findings here, I noticed that the spine is in a linear fashion. Um, it's sometimes we find in cases like scoliosis, where there is a curvature within the spine on the, on the, on the, sorry, ah. on the sagittal plane, I believe. Um, according to the findings, the spine is linear and I don't notice any curvatures as in scoliosis. The patient's posture is also um, erect, which is uh, not indicative of kyphosis or lordosis, okay? So we're gonna start here at the C1. Um, the first cervical spine transverse process is located right over here. Is this tender at all? I don't know. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go to the anterior space of the mastoid process here. And if you're able to uh, take your chin down to your chest, uh, just 15 degrees to 20 degrees, so not ever so slightly, that's it. And that space should close. If you're able to look up a little bit, just 15 to 20 degrees, yeah, that opens. Are you able to look from side to side? Okay. Perfect. I'm gonna go to the posterior space here, and if you're able to take your ears to your shoulders, just 15 to 20 degrees, yeah, that space should also open. So that's actually the C1 connecting with the occiput. In order to assess the occiput to C1, I'm just gonna palpate the massive process. I'm gonna place my hand over here and motion palpate by, um, I'm going to essentially challenge uh, the so I process here laterally and the other one. Okay, so I'm looking for a soft end feel. This one tends, the left side is, is more firm. Do you feel any discomfort when I press on it like this? No. Okay, good. And on lateral flexion, if you can take this ear slightly towards this way, there we go. And then the other way, uh, this way. And this way and there so I need pain or discomfort over there yeah okay good so on the C2 I'm gonna go to the posterior arch of the cervical spine and I'm just gonna passively rotate your head and I'm looking for the space between my hand to essentially open up and that The posterior arch disappear from my index finger when I rotate it to the left. And when I rotate it to the right, it should disappear from my thumb. So that indicates that the joints are moving, moving well. Okay. So all the way to the very end here, we're going to do full uh, rotation. And all right, good. So your neck is actually pretty um, supple. Uh, do you ever experience neck pain at all? No. Okay. There's some stiffness here on the upper portion of the trapezius, but we can take a look at that later. Um, for the thoracic spine, I'm going to ask you to cross your arms if you're able to. Um, if you're able to place your hands on your shoulder and cross. Does that interfere with microphone placement? <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay. Um, and then from here, okay, I'm gonna palpate the spinous processes from side to side. So I'm just gonna place my arm around you like this, so. And I'm gonna look at the transverse process. And I'm gonna turn you, so yeah, just let your body be kind of, just let me move. Yeah, try to, try to relax here. So what I'm looking for is that the spine should move away okay 
all right so actually i'm finding some fixations over here so ideally i want the spinous process to move away from my fingers um when they are stuck or they're moving towards me there is a possibility that the erector spinae is um is in spasm on the opposite side so over here uh, especially on the t4 t5 t6 area i'm noticing that there's some even if i feel this there's some stiffness over here i'm going to repeat that on the other side bilaterally so i'm just going to rotate you this way sorry there yeah so they seem to be moving towards me when I expect them to move away. Uh, so we have a bilateral lesion on the erector spinae on the T3, T4, T5 segments over here. So that is a type four or a type two, but I'm going to uh, test it by a lateral flexion as well. So I'm gonna place my hand over here and I'm going to essentially try to flex you sideways if you just allow me, there we go. So what we're expecting here is that the spinous process moves away from me on flexion. Okay, in this case, they do move away. So it's, a, it's not a type four issue. Oh, oh, except on this T4, T5 segment. So they do, are, they are coming towards me. All right. So how that works, okay. So a lot of the issues are found on the T3, T4, T5 segment. So essentially your spinous process kind of looks like, like there, uh, okay. So this is spinous process. These are transverse processes. So when I rotate your spine this way, ideally um, this will turn towards that side. Mm -hmm. um, in some instances, it is either stuck or it's coming towards me, which means this muscle group over here that holds this spine could be in could be stiff or in spasm so when i turn you it's basically yanking this way so to correct that we're going to perform a manipulation on this side to kind of help push it that way and uh, we can do cupping on the erector spinae in order to relax it so that it doesn't go in spasm okay so so yeah so that's the findings on the thoracic spine and uh, on the lumbar, we haven't done it yet, so I'm gonna move down to the lumbar segments over here. Uh, the lumbar, we can start with um, lateral flexion again. So I'm just gonna place my hand over here. In this case, I want the lumbar to move towards me, which is the opposite of the thoracic. In this case, they are. Egg. Yeah, they are doing that even at the lower segment, which is good. And on this side as well. Oops, sorry. Okay, let me see. The right side is a little... Okay. On the L1, L2. Okay. And I'm going to test the rotation as well. So I'm going to place my hand here and just rotate you towards me. Similarly, it should move away because we're trying to not as much rotation um, in the lumbar as in the thoracic. But ideally, we wanted to see it moving away from us. So this way. Okay, this one's moving towards me. Okay, towards me. Towards me. And I'm just going to do lateral flexion here again. Okay, so we have a PL, meaning it's kind of moving to the left side. And yeah, so it's a rotary, a rotary fixation on the L2, L3 segment. So that could be corrected with a lumbar roll. I believe this is a type two issue as well. All right, Alex, so um, according to the findings, uh, we mentioned that around the T3, T4, and T5 uh, segments, there's a, there's a type two um, rotational fixation bilaterally. 
so on both sides, but more prominent on the left. Erector's bene. And then on the lumbar, we have a PL type 2 as well, left. On the left side, on the L2, L3. Oh, actually, it's a type 4 because both lateral flexion and rotation was an issue. Okay, so for that, we can do the spinous push. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate how um, to manipulate those joints. So I'll have you, uh, basically, we'll take off this gown and then have you face down, laying down. Yes, yeah, so you just face down. I have a towel here. The headrest is a little flimsy, just FYI. Okay. It, yeah, it, if your head drops, like, just be careful, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, I need a new table. All right, okay, so we've identified the left fixation issue on the T3, T4, and T5. Okay. All right, perfect. So we can perform a cross bilateral. So, standing on the... Right side, that's perfect. So I'm gonna choose T3 over here. All right, so we're just gonna remove the skin slack. Oh, you okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so let me just let me see this. Yeah, this left side is a little bit more stiff than the, the right side. Do you feel this? Do you notice what I'm talking about? I do, yeah. Okay, is there discomfort when I press on it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it feel better with pressure? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Okay. Because some people, it feels worse when you press on it. Okay, so on this side. All right. Especially this side. Yeah, right here. All right. So take a deep breath in. Hang on a second. Actually, let me, let me do it this way. Yeah, so it should be, actually, my hand should go this way. Perfect. All right, so take a deep breath in. And exhale all the way. So there was a little cavitation over here. I'm gonna try that again over here. Take a deep breath in and exhale. It's it's gone on that side. So did you feel that? I felt it the first time. The first time, right? Yeah, the first time has gotten it. Now for here we can do a I'm just going to turn your head slightly this way. All right. And if you could take a deep breath in and exhale. Yeah, this, this one's a little stiff. We can try um, cupping it later and putting some acupuncture needles. It is on the C7, T1 junction. Yeah, so on the upper trapezius. Okay, as far as this... one L2 is concerned. We did mention it's on the left side and it's a, all right. So what we're gonna do here is you're going to turn, yeah, you're going to turn towards the wall sideways. Yeah, perfect, with your arms crossed. Like this? Yeah, and if you can move your hips uh, to the edge of this table. Okay, and I'm going to bend your knee. And I'm going to hook it underneath over there. All right, I'm just going to move towards... Okay, this could become tricky with this aquarium here, but let me see. So I'm going to just move your leg up here. Uh, are you able to take the base pelvis uh, closer Perfect. out? There we go. All right, so, so because it's a type four, we're gonna do a spinous push. All right, so we have this knee bent. This one's kind of hooked. Uh, the inner one, okay, can you give me this arm? I'm just going to pull it. I 
I know. Have you ever had this done? No. no. Okay. This should be actually be slightly higher. This is not this is not gonna be high, but I'm gonna put a pillow here. One second. Alright, perfect. So yeah, same position. Yeah, so I'm just gonna this is actually good that I have someone here who has never had this done to them because usually my classmates are like in position and I'm like, you're not letting me do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we're taking this pelvis and moving it out here a little bit. And I'm gonna take this arm and I'm just gonna pull it. There we go. This is gonna end like for such a large person as well. This is, so basically I'm gonna hook the knee here. Okay, I'm gonna make sure you don't fall off the bed. So can you move back a bit? Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, I think this is good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, there we go. So we said it was the L2, L3, which we marked over here. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm just gonna track. Uh, if you could place this hand just slightly there, so I'm gonna traction that. Here it is, okay. All right, so if you could take a deep breath in here and exhale. All the way. Did you feel anything? Felt something. I feel like I didn't do it properly. Okay. <laughs> it's my fault. Um, we could try again. Um, let me see. I think here. If you could take your uh, hip, inner hip out. Uh, yeah, like closer, but then the outer hip is like further, which is, yeah, perfect. And then down. Yeah, this is, all right. All right, so we're going to. I'm gonna do the push on the L2. I feel like it's not even, it's more like that. Actually, I'm just gonna do like this. This is much better. Okay, breathe in. Out. Come back to the center. Um, let me think. It's really difficult to do it on a really tall person no, okay. <laughs> because my leg is the side. But let me let me troubleshoot. Can you do a step, maybe. Hmm. Can you do a step. Let's try it on the other side, because um, I feel like the other side is a little. Oh, like a step, and then basically just <laughs> yeah, from this side. Yeah, this may be. Okay. I'm going to. Yeah, I think you're more secure this way, and I feel like I need to just traction you. This is a lot more comfortable, probably, right? Yeah, well, I'm not as close to the edge. Yeah, I think that was my issue. I, I just have you way too close to the edge. Um, I'm just going to palpate that segment that needs that. On this side, it's not as, as terrible as the other one. Here. All right, so I'm going to... Yeah, just let... Oh, I think you're... Uh, if you can take your hip out, at, at just like kind of angle your hip in a... Yeah, like that. Yeah, because you're actually quite flexible. Um, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like... You're like a... Just twizzly... Twizzly... Uh, like a licorice, like just... Okay, there we go. So breathe in. And out. Feeling. Yeah. Huh? I felt something, but nothing like abrupt. Okay. What did you feel? Uh, more like like a, like an like an intense stretch. Okay. Yeah. So nothing really was. Okay. So thanks for uh, modeling that. Um, let me see here. Let me just traction your leg so that you don't develop any complications from the treatment <laughs> as a result of. So yeah, let me see if I can get the the neck portion here. Are you able to kind of scooch up just a tad? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Yep, just let your head down. Okay, so here we have, this, it was in the T7. Huh. Let me see this. Oh, yeah, here. How does this feel? Here? A little tender. Yeah. 
versus this is also a little. Let's see, okay, so we have a like C1 to oxybut. Okay, so for that, okay, let's see if we can decide, right? Yes. Here. All right, so just wiggle your toes. Oh yeah, you have never had this done. No, no. no okay, no. so yeah, I can tell that you're a little <laughs> nervous. Um, is it okay for me to to do this? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so what I need you to do is to um, relax. Mm -hmm. uh, see if you can focus your attention to your toes. Yeah, so we have it here. All right, so just wiggle your toes. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah, I felt something. <laughs> yeah, so that you felt. All right, because that is a lot more fixated than your other joints. And the other side also kind of has a similar issue, but not as bad. So, there. And just wiggle your toes. Wiggle. Hold on a second. I lost it. Mm. I'm just waiting for this plane to pass. Yes, try not to help me. Just completely be like a rag doll. As I said, you're very flexible, so you have a lot of range of motion. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, how does that feel? It feels good. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah, that feels much better from palpation. There's more mobility. Yeah, one thing I should have done is tested your uh, range of motion in the beginning, but you do have quite um, mobile joints, so your range of motion is a lot more than most people, That which makes it more difficult for me to do my job. <laughs> but usually, yeah, I don't see a lot of uh, males who have that ability. It's mostly females who have this kind of very... Um, mobile joints um so yeah so that's that's good that we were able to get that uh, neck um yeah so if you face down we can do some work on to the upper portion of your trapezius all right so yeah a lot of the issues that was identified were over here Okay, all right, so I'm going to essentially, yeah, work on it from this angle. Okay. So for this, we're going to need our lighter. Right back. Okay, I need a lighter. Okay, so we're going to do 
Okay, on this side, small intestine 15 and 14, which is on the C7 and C1. Four turns out, which is in line with the scapular border right over here. Okay. And small intestine 13 and 12 and 11. So a lot of the problem areas were located over here, right? Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's still a little tender. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soften it up with some oil. So this area here. Try to lengthen this area. This is where the fixation was located over here. So, all right, we're going to place a cup over there. So place this on somewhere here because they're still a little chilly. So okay, all right. So let's do this. to burn my hair or anyone's hair all right there we go some more oil on this part of the back. Uh, so the cups are now on you. How does it feel? It feels good. Okay. I'll just place this down here. So the location of the injuries in the lower back, so that's where we're going to place these bigger ones. All right. So here we have this on this location here where we found tightness. So I'm going to place some more cups onto the upper back. Where's the hemos at? Hmm.
All right, so while you're face down there, I'm going to take uh, these are some tools called gua sha, and we're going to see if we can locate those problem areas and apply acupuncture. You might notice some marks on your back tomorrow, just so you know. Um, is this okay? Is it too much? No, it's good now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Lots here can get tender. So working on the latissimus dorsi here. And the trapezius on this side. Rhomboids and iliocastalis, longissimus, and spinalis on the rectus spinae. Quadratus lumborum on the lower aspect over here. The infraspinatus as well. Spinatus, subscapularis, teres minor and teres major, which is here. And we can even take it to the deltoids. So these areas here is the small intestine channel, 9, 10. Just let me know if this is too much pressure. For some people, it can get too much. So this and this was where the pain is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Alright, 
So I removed all of the uh, I keep, uh, sorry the the cups. So you you experience some like redding red reddening of the skin, which will eventually turn purple. You may experience fatigue tomorrow. Yeah, for some reason doing this gets people tired. Um, okay, so I think I'm not gonna insert any needles now because there's too much oil everywhere. Uh, that's something that I should have done earlier on. And I think this uh, portions of these muscles uh, groups here, the upper trapezius has relaxed a little bit, so there's a definitely, um, yeah, actually, let's uh, test, uh, I'm just going to ask you to, yeah, if you're able to take your chin towards the left side here, yeah, so, let's see, yeah, there's definitely more movement in here, and then on the other side as well. So there's a lot more, a lot more movement available on this. Okay, so I'm going to uh, wrap this up by removing the oil from your body. <laughs> One moment, let me get a towel. All right, Alex, so I'm just gonna remove the oil from your back now. Thank you so much for coming in today. Try to remove as much of it as possible. There we go. Yeah, I don't think this requires any needles. Maybe next time. But for today, I think we'll leave it as, as is. Because there's now huge welts into your back. And uh, needling that could cause bleeding. So we'll leave it for today. All right, so thank you so much. Uh, you can put your shirt on now. Just watch out for these glass cups because they can fall and drop. Um, here you go. Thank you.